Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a short story because it is Short Story Tuesday. Um, I want to talk about a short story that features um, accidental deaths and uh, the consequences of those accidents. Um, I am referring to uh, the short story Death Chronicle uh, by Yu Hua, uh, if we're not pronouncing that right, uh, in, from his short story collection, The April 3rd Incident. Uh, an in interesting uh, cover. Um, got a horse right there. No, wait. It's a dog, I think. Never mind. Um, anyways, uh, it's a collection of short stories that, uh, that I don't think he published anywhere else. Some of them are about him or have characters that have his name. Um, for those that don't know, Yu Hua is a, um, a Chinese author uh, who has written um, using uh, Chinese metafiction styles and postmodernism styles before. Uh, it definitely comes off in his, um, in his, in his books. Um, he's, he's known for writing essays and, and books and, and short stories, novels, and stuff like that. Um, this particular, um, collection was translated by Alan Barr. I, I don't know if that means he added his own, um, like editorial style to it, but, uh, probably just means that he wrote everything out and, or, um, translated it from the Chinese. But, um, again, I don't know what exactly that means when, when reading, you know, translated works. Uh, maybe you can tell me below in the comments, um, what exactly that means and what's what's what exactly the role of the translator is you know beyond translating the work um so yeah uh this is an author that i hadn't um encountered before apparently he he writes about the, the chinese experience um including touching upon the the cultural revolution uh which was um you know an important time for china uh when he writes about it he doesn't really um uh, criticize it too deeply, but he also doesn't um, doesn't hide from the fact that pe people suffered and there was a lot of death during that time. So, an interesting author. Uh, let's but let's talk about his short story here today, Death Chronicle. Um, I'll do a summary and a little analysis, and we will move on from there. So, Death Chronicle focuses on an unnamed truck driver. Uh, the story um, highlights that he's driving a liberation truck. I looked it up, and it, apparently it's, um, it's a, uh, a, a uh, military style truck but it can also be used for farming uh, so maybe he's connected to the military in some way he's driving on a mountain pass when he encounters a, um, a child on a bicycle um, on the road and he, he realizes that if he swerves left his truck will flip over and he'll die in a fiery accident and if he swerves right he'll, he'll drive into the reservoir below and possibly drown so he unfortunately decides to keep going forward and he knocks the small boy into the reservoir presumably to where he's found dead um, as he believes the child to be dead. After driving away, the, the truck driver later on has a child and although he loves interacting with his, with his son, uh, he, he begins to feel a sense of dread anytime he's around the, the boy, especially when he's uh, riding on his bicycle and he, he he believes that 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 dread stems from the fact that he you know did this hit and run so many years ago um uh the f story then fast forwards a little bit uh to the future um uh, he's on a uh a road called the bone shaker um which it has a lot of potholes and it's making him very nauseous and when he finally gets back to the normal asphalt uh his stomach is a little nauseous so he can't pay attention to the road and unfortunately uh he hits another person in the process uh, when he when he checks it out, he sees that um, there's a, a little girl near, underneath the vehicle. Um, and at first he thinks that um, because no one has seen it, seen him do this, he can just, you know, dispose of the body no problem. Uh, and he tries to hide the evidence initially, but he, they, he sees a vision of the young boy, possibly a ghost, and he decides to take um, the girl to the hospital, carry her to the hospital. Um, he makes his way to a, a village where the people begin pointing fingers at him and and telling him that he's in for it now, uh, wh whatever that that means, and he he takes the child to 
a man who's presumably her father. And then the, the villagers began attacking him, despite the fact that he felt he did a, a noble thing by returning the girl. Um, and they they kill him with farming equipment. So the story ends pretty violently uh, with the way Yu Hua just describes like the, the internal organs falling out in, in the wake of these, these, these attacks with scythes and hoes and rakes. It's pretty gruesome. In terms of analysis, the past is a big theme of this short story, specifically how you're not really able to escape your past. Uh, the the uh, truck driver in the story is uh, tormented by the, by the fact that they uh, accidentally ran over this young boy at the beginning of the story. Uh, they, uh, throughout the story, they begin to see ghosts, the ghosts of this young boy, or maybe guilty visions of the boy, but whatever the case, it's clear that uh, it's on the boy's mind. Uh, um, initially, this starts when uh, the when the truck driver interacts with his son. Like he's very happy at first, but then he begins to feel uh, sadness and dread um, each time he interacts with them. Uh, I'll read a quote to you from this. Then, as my son was gaily riding his bike around, I don't know why, but some little devil got me thinking about that boy who fell into the reservoir over ten years ago. Seen from behind, my son on his bike looked just like that kid, particularly with that head of black hair. He was practically the spitting image, and so that pair of overalls came into my mind. The worst thing was that my son ran right into a tree that day and cried, Dad, in great alarm. His shout made me shiver inside, and the image of the boy soaring through the air and plummeting into the water suddenly flashed in my mind. What was weird that was that my son's cry, though it came from just a few meters away, to my ears sounded very distant, like the echo I heard in the mountains. So it's it's very clear that um, this uh, this man is this dr truck driver is feeling uh, a lot of a lot of guilt about it, um, and uh, his own son crashing into a tree just brings back those memories seemingly across time, uh, and it, it's 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 not a good feeling. And then he um, after he runs over the little girl later in the story, he sees visions of this of this boy, which compel him to um, to feel. An intense guilt, and and is the reason he takes the the child um, back to back to the village um, so that he can do something noble. Um, it, it it seems that there's no escaping the past either in this story. Um, uh, the, the child, the the boy that he ran over, is always going to come back to him, uh, no matter what he tries to do. Um, there's even a part in the story where, um, uh, as he's carrying the young girl, he imagines that he's actually in the past and that he he's um, that he actually went back. Back into the reservoir and picked up the young boy and saved him. Um, that he that he made a different action, and so it's it seems like he's trying to imagine a a, um, a better outcome than what actually happened. And he pro he proclaims that he's that he's actually doing something noble, uh, which he's he's in fact not. He had he wasn't paying attention to the road um, both times, and and that uh, cost two young children their their lives. So. Um, Regardless of how he feels, it's clear that he did something monstrous, and the the villagers treat him that exact way. One thing that I really love about this story is the is Yu Hua's writing uh, when the truck driver gets into the village. Everything feels I want to say surreal or dreamy or hellish even uh just the way the um the the truck driver interacts with these people who don't trust him and when they see that he's carrying the child they immediately re re view him with with anger because of uh, what what they uh presume that he did which is either run her over or beat this child to death he's responsible and he has to pay uh there's an interesting quote that i would like to read to you again as i drew nearer to the houses i realized there were still more houses beyond them a large tree blocked my path and in its shade an old woman sat topless, topless, her dried up breast hanging all the way to her waist. She was watching me, and when I went over and asked where I would find a hospital, she saw the girl in my arms and gave a scream. You're in for it now, she cried. That cry alerted me that I had made a big mistake by not making good my escape. But now it was too late. I looked down at the girl to find that blood was no longer dripping from her forehead, and her black hair was no longer waving free, for blood had glued it together. Her body seemed to be losing its warmth, though actually it was my own heart cooling down. Again I asked the old woman directions to a hospital, and again she answered with a shriek. She was frightened dumb by the awful sight, I thought, and I knew I would get no answer from her if I asked again. So I skirted the tree and proceeded, but the old woman followed me, shouting over and over, You're in for it now! 
Soon she had rushed ahead, shrieking incessantly with a cry grating as the sound of breaking glass. I saw a few piglets scurry past, and then several other older women appeared, coming up to me. They took one look, and then they too cried, You're in for it now! So I followed along behind the old woman as they wailed, though I was now utterly confused, unsure what was the point of my going in this direction. Before long, there was a big crowd of people on all sides, and my ears were buzzing with a chaotic hubbub of voices. I couldn't absorb anything they were saying. All I noticed was that there were men and women, young and old. Only now did it dawn on me that I was in the, a village. How could I expect to find a hospital in a village? Suddenly, it all seemed ridiculous. The road ahead was crammed, so I turned around, only to find that that way was blocked by just as dense a throng. So, pretty interesting passage there, just highlighting the, the bizarre and kind of chaotic nature of, of being in this village, where... Uh, once the women see uh, and the, the the crowd see this uh, this this truck driver with the uh, with the child, um, they they're like you're in for it now. Something bad is going to happen, and something indeed bad happens once the the child is returned to her uh, uh, presumably her father. Um, they, they they attack the man with with hose, rakes, and sides, and it's not a pretty picture. Um, is is this justice? Um, uh, I, I I would ask you that. Um, I I would say no. It's it's not justice. It seems pretty extreme to kill this man for an accident. But maybe this is just the mistakes of your past coming back to bite you. And you know, the, uh, karma or something like that. Probably probably not karma. But um, I I really like Yuhua's writing here. How it how he gets at the chaos and the um, the the utter confusion um, that this man is feeling. This truck driver and how it um, it ultimately leads to his death. So those are my thoughts on Death Chronicle by Yu Hua, a pretty uh, fascinating short story and a pretty good collection. Um, I, I feel like um, Yu Hua's writing is pretty consistent throughout. In the first short story that I read, um, there uh, it's about um, a man uh, with a case of mistaken identity. Uh, someone shows up at his door and says, hey, your friend died, um, and they won't take no for an answer. This man asserts that he has no friends, uh, but he's forced to, to visit the, the dead man and his mother, and he makes friends with her and so he, he realizes that he has to assume this mistaken identity for uh quite some time just to just to appease these people and i, I really like it it's it's um it's really solid i recommend it to you out there um i i'm probably going to seek out more of his writing in the future uh, uh just because it's it's um pretty unique i i would say i hope i can find more translations of of his work um if you read his work before uh comment below or if you want to say something about my review also comment below i would love to hear from you let's have a discussion about yu hua and in the meantime don't forget to like share and subscribe so that more people can find out about his wonderful work um and until then i wish you the best of luck and your weird and guilt-ridden travels farewell